Armenia is in the fight for its life. The Queensland election continues to heat up and Rudy Giuliani nukes the Biden campaign from orbit. This is The Ark with Ricardo Bosi. Ricardo, how are you? Always well, mate. Always well. Good to be here. Last week, we spent a lot of time on the US election. This week, we have one story from it because of the amount of things happening that we need to cover. The most important thing that's happening, and it, it is life and death, um, that I think we're covering this week is there's the Armenian genocide, which we can only talk about briefly. Now, there's a march this weekend that you guys should definitely attend if you're in Sydney. It's in... Um, it's going to be in the city. It's at 2 p.m. And uh, that's going to be this Saturday. So that'll be tomorrow when this releases. I urge you guys to all get out there. And um, Ricardo, can you see yourself uh, making it out there? Oh, absolutely. This has been an issue for a long time, not just for the Armenians. And for people to understand the importance of it. Imagine the hue and cry if society denied the Holocaust of the Jews, the 6 million Jews, which was part of... 20 million people that Hitler killed. So it was more than just the Jews, obviously. You know, gays, political prisoners, gypsies, disabled people. So Hitler killed 20 million. So imagine if we denied that. Mm. Well, that's what the Armenians have been suffering mm. for over a century now. You can't even mention the word Armenian genocide in the same sentence. Mm. And uh, they have a case to make, and Australia should know about it, and Australia should support them. Mm. A lo lot of people, including myself, I didn't know a lot about the Armenian crisis. I knew one and a half million people died, which is a ton of people. Um, and I decided to, with Dougal, I, I teamed up with Dougal Cameron at Carnage House Productions, and we filmed this episode called Scott Morrison, We Expect More, um, which centres around the Armenian genocide. And we interview the two foremost experts in Australia on this being uh, coming from the Armenian National Committee of Australia. Guys, go check it out. The link's in the description. It's very, it's very important. You know, we talk about a lot of things. We talk about cash. We talk about this and that. This is happening today. And we have an Armenian premier in New South Wales who I haven't heard talk on this. And we have a Scott Morrison who in 2011 said that we must recognise the Armenian genocide. And he's silent on this. Uh, we're not very creative people, guys. I'll put it that way to you. I didn't come up with Silent Scott out of thin air. He inspired it. There is some content there. So I don't want to say any more on this topic. Go check out the episode, and hopefully we can see you next week, uh, on this Saturday at the March. But um, seriously, this is, this is life and death stuff, and it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking. I wanted to start the episode officially off with this quote. The society that separates its scholars from its warriors will have its thinking done by cowards and its fighting done by fools. That's from Thucydides. Ricardo, are we the fools? We're heading that way. Um, Australia's fortunate in that it's never had to fight on its own land for its own survival. But the, as they say, soft times make for weak men. And most Australians don't know what it is to hold a weapon in your hand, with the full magazine and the safety on instant. It's a sobering position to be in. We need to learn to fight. And most Australians have no idea how to fight. And I don't mean physically, I mean metaphorically even. But physically helps. One of the things, one of the elements that will secure our future is if, is if as many former members of the ADF, Army, Navy, Air Force get involved in politics because we need strong, hard, straight people to start running this country and it starts at the grassroots level. So if you want to join another party, you fill your boots but make sure you hold, you hold those values that you have signed up for, you hold them dear to your heart. Join Australia One, I can tell you that because we need fighters and I'm getting a lot of calls from people, ex-military types particularly, I'm particularly interested in getting because you're straight, you're hard and you know how to fight because our opponents are not going to go down willingly. We have to beat them in every metaphorical sense we possibly can. So, yeah, join up. Last week, uh, actually, no, a couple of weeks ago, we covered um, an episode called The Great Reset, and that episode has been doing phenomenally well, guys. It's, it's about to crack 300,000 views alone. There, we made a lot of comments in that. One of the things we didn't co cover was the digital cash situation, What's going on? I've heard a lot of chitter-chatter on online, but what's this all about? Okay, this is one element of a very sophisticated plan, but let's, let's just highlight that one for this week. Digital cash sounds great. 
Forget cash, forget coins. It's fantastic. Just your card and away you go. Well, how do I put this? Have you ever been banned or blocked on Twitter and Facebook for inappropriate comments? A lot of people have. Now, imagine if you said something inappropriate and they banned you from access to your cash, mm. your account, your money. Because if, if you have digital cash, hard cash, physical cash is gone. So you only have access to data, basically, in your account. What this gives the great reset enthusiasts the ability to do is to turn off your access to your funds instantly because there's only digital cash. And that's one of the ways they get to control us. Now, if that sounds like a conspiracy theory, I wonder if there's anybody in the, on the planet that's actually been uh, blocked from their account for saying something inappropriate. Well, it's funny you should say that. Um, it's happened multiple times. There was one guy in Canada, I think he was a Proud Boy bloke, and um, he got shut out of his bank account. They closed it. That's it. He's gone. Another one, another situation happened in 2018. Um, for the longest time, we thought Patreon was banning people, and they were to an extent. But in a lot of the cases, we discovered that it wasn't Patreon that was pushing the bans. It was MasterCard who was providing Patreon. Now, for those of you that don't know Patreon, you know I, I get a lot of subscribers who pay financially through Subscribestar. Well, the reason I'm with Subscribestar is because if I went with Patreon, at any time they could pull the plug on me either by their own choosing, for, from what I say, or by what MasterCard says. That's unacceptable. We need something to solve this issue. And, you know, whether that's an internet bill of rights or something, I don't know. But we need some, something to solve this because it's unacceptable to be stripped of your right to speak in a public square like that. Yeah, the digital cash is a key part of what they have in China with the social credit system. Social credits, if you do the right thing, you get access. You get freedom of movement. You get money. But if you upset the, uh, the China, Chinese Communist Party to the least degree, mm. they shut down your access to transport, to money, to freedoms. And this is a key part of it, and they're slipping it in slowly. And you don't have to be Einstein to figure this out. Blind Freddy can see what's going on. So that's it. So if someone tells you the digital cash is the way to go, be very afraid. And then when they say, oh, well, until COVID, you know, COVID uh, bugs uh, get transmitted through cash, so therefore we, you can't... Um, you can't do it. Well, COVID is an amazingly cunning little bug because it, trans it transfers on cash but doesn't transfer on everything else. You know, it's, it's a lie. We know it's a lie. This 1.5 metres, it's a lie. Have you seen Chatswood Station? It's wall-to-wall -wall people without masks getting on with their lives and there's no COVID explosion there. Mm. So the COVID excuse for digital cash is a lie. It's part of the social credit system, which they want to roll out globally as part of the Great Reset uh, and it's being used in, in China. Mm. So... No digital cash, hard cash, coins, dollars. Interesting. Queensland election has been um, heating up quite a bit, as I said in the intro. I've been hearing, because I, I get a lot of messages from people online saying, Joe, you've got to be careful of this Ricardo Bosi guy. He's a white nationalist. <laughs> <laughs> are you? Are you a white nationalist, my Italian friend? <laughs> yeah, put me in the sun for a week. I'm black as the ace of spades. I had a couple of years in Papua New Guinea. I had many years in the Middle East. I can tell you, you spend that much time in the sun. They used to think I was from anywhere but yeah. Europe. Um, I was, I was uh, South American. I was, you name it, I was Palestinian. It was, yeah. it was great. Yeah. So, but let's take a serious. Give me a break, please. A white supremacist. The reason that's been coming up recently, it's quite funny. The... This is the predictive programming. Remember the hit piece they did on me in the City Morning Herald? Well, yeah. uh, they, a, uh, a paper in uh, my electorate in, in Queensland, in Nicklin, ran a story that uh, lift, literally lifted an entire paragraph out of that, that story into their story about being a, a white supremacist. But the, it was clever the way they did it. See, the LNP, the Liberal National Party, hmm. candidate preferenced me number two, which I had no... I, I have no idea why he did that because I've gone on record several times, and I'll say it again, I want to burn the LNP and the Labor Party and the Greens to the ground. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's for a whole bunch of good reasons. Yeah. And yet they put me number two. I don't know, maybe they're trying to get my cachet. They think, oh, look, he's, he's supporting Rick, so maybe, maybe we should support this guy. But the Labor Party then, um, during a meeting, no, it was during an email, an email from the campaign director asked the question why the Liberals were, the LNP, the Liberal National Party, 
we're preferencing a white supremacist. <laughs> I've got to see this. I don't believe it. That's it's, amazing. <laughs> and it's just, it is just funny. Um, I'm on, the, there are any number of videos out there, uh, me arguing against exactly that. Yeah, exactly. It's not race, it's culture. It's not race. All right. I'm going to do you a favor. There is a video I've got of you arguing during, this is the night of the Eden Manara election, I think in oh, May yeah. or June. You're arguing with four white nationalists. One of them wasn't arguing. I'm going to leave him out of it. You're arguing with four white nationalists and you are arguing with them. And they were making the point that culture and ethnicity are one in the same, which is insane because culture, <laughs> culture is informed by geography, you say in it. It's informed by your religion. It's informed by you know, the language you speak, everything. And they were saying something that you can't change is also something that you can change. And they're, they're one in the same. I thought, this is, this is insane. So anyone that's going to... Th they clearly haven't seen that video of you arguing with the white nationalists because if they did, they'd look, they'd look stupid like they do now. And there's not... And I mean, the most popular video we've got from last week, it's almost reached 60,000 views, is you tearing up at watching uh, w black people in America being self-empowered to seize their, their future and, the, and their destiny. I, you're a terrible white nationalist, Ricardo. You should hand in your card right now because you <laughs> suck at it. <laughs> it's funny. I never, we, never, um, we never saw colour as kids. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but it, uh, what always stirred my soul was the character of the man or the woman on TV, or the mm. movie I was watching or the story I was being told. The colour was largely immaterial to us, and I guess we're just lucky we weren't raised in that environment, and it's anathema to blame somebody or, or to, to associate a whole series of qualities to the someone with, uh, according to the amount of melanin in their skin. Yep. I mean, give me a break. Mm. It's, it's childish in the extreme. Yep. And look, okay, <laughs> I've had a black girlfriend. I'm not racist. Maybe, okay, all you men out there haven't had a black girlfriend. You're all racist. I mean, give me a break, please. <laughs> Grow up. Yeah. If this is the best the Labor Party and the LNP in Queensland can do, then, you know, good luck, fellas. But you know what? Nobody, nobody's buying your rubbish, seriously. They're in trouble. They're in trouble. They know they're in it. trouble. Yeah. Jesus. They know they're in trouble. That's funny. That's actually so funny. I, um, an another thing we, we, I wanted to touch on in the Queensland election, and we've covered this at length in episode two. You can, you can check out our voter fraud episode. Voter fraud. What's going on? Is, uh, is, is this election going to be something there where it's going to be fair and no. free? And no, it's bent from the start. We know the Chinese are involved in the counting. I don't get it. Why, why, why participate then? Well, we have to. We have to. But let's talk about the fraud, and then you sure. can ask me about why I'm actually playing this ridiculous game. Yeah, sure. In fact, one of my supporters put up a post saying, watching Ricardo play politics is like watching a lion trying to be a hyena. And it was a compliment, and I get it, because there's another way I'd like to solve this, let me tell you. And no, for all you lunatics out there, that doesn't mean an armed revolt. Yeah. Please, just stop it. Yeah. Anyway, corruption. There were reports in the press that voters were going into the booths and their names were already crossed off. Somebody had already voted in their name. Now, for the imbeciles in the Liberal Labor Party and the Greens, because they're all, they're all involved, they think this is a bit of fun, you know, let's flip an electorate, let's flip an election, it's all good fun. Well, the fun's going to stop when there's an A1 government, because in stealing somebody's vote, you are taking their single most important possession, their right to dictate, to say, to speak, to vote for their leader. Anybody... And it's in our policies, so I'm not making this up on the fly. It's in our policies. If you're involved in vote fraud, you will spend a minimum of 12 months behind bars for every vote you cast. And when you get a custodial sentence in excess of 12 months, you are excluded from a lot of things in life. So warning to all of you, you liberal morons, you labor morons that do this, anybody uh, who's involved in a conspiracy to organise it. Whoa, you get even worse. And then the organisation also gets slapped, just like corporations do, and the chief executives and those involved in the chain of command will spend five, ten years behind bars. Excellent. This is serious. It's not a game. Excellent. A bit of fun at the voting booths. Mm. You're going to spend a lot of time in jail and you won't see your kids and you won't see your wife and you won't see your husband. This is not a game anymore. Consequence-free politics in Australia is dead. You steal somebody's vote... You're going to go to jail. Really simple. 
The AEC, that corrupted organisation, I'm not saying the head of the AEC is corrupted, but the organisation is corrupted, is facilitating this. We're going to put a bottle of Drano through the AEC and the state electoral commissions as well. Because it's not unusual, and this happened in Eden Monaro, there are a bunch of Labor heavyweights intimidating the other uh, volunteers who are trying to hand out how to vote. Yeah. Once again, jail time for every last one of you. Really simple. This is not a game anymore. We're taking back our country and you corrupt bastards are going to spend a lot of time in jail. The, the question must be asked, though, if it's as corrupt as you say, two things could be true at once. Why are you running? Is it worth it? I mean, a lot of people are saying armed revolution, you know? Yeah. Very American revolution. We get, I get a lot of... There are a lot of groups uh, that have the same frustration as we in A1 about what's going on in Australia. And we're all approaching it from a very different angle. In the military, we call it an attack on converging axes. So if we want to take the hill... Uh, one team will come up the north slope, one will come up the east slope, and we're not coordinated at all. We just see what's got to be done and we're all moving in our own way. Now, we've got people who want an armed rebellion. We want some people who want a lawful rebellion. We have the common law people who are pursuing that approach. Um, we have the constitutionalists who are pro uh, using that approach. And uh, they're all fighting with each other, which is insane, because we all have the same objective. And I get asked the question, why are you running? Why are you running? Why are you running? Well, for the obvious question is to save the country. But why participate in an obviously unconstitutional and corrupted system? Yeah. And the answer is very simple, legitimacy. Yep. Because I don't care how th right you think you are, a piece of paper isn't going to save Australia. No matter how right it is, jails around the planet are full of people who are right. That doesn't work. So it's legitimacy. So if I contest the Nicklin election, the, the seat of Nicklin, and Tracy contests Corumban, and we win... Let's say we get half the votes plus one. That's about 16,000 votes apiece. That means I've got 16,000 people who trust me to speak for them, regardless of the constitutionality or the legality of the election. That's 16,000 people have said, I want him to speak for me. I want her to speak for me. So this legitimacy is critical. Now, when we get into parliament, and we will, see, at the moment, I'm just a guy with a, with a, with a voice. That's nothing. The moment I become a member of parliament, the world has to now pay attention because that legitimacy is there, mm. and then we can start twisting arms like never before. Yeah. So it is critical. And I've got, to, I've got to make it clear to people, this is the last shot we've got. The Great Reset kicks off next year. Go online. <laughs> if you want to, go on our Facebook page, and you'll see the plan. Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four for next year, what's going to happen in the Great Reset as your freedoms um, are removed. Absolutely removed. This is the last shot. Yep. We get in, we've got a chance. We don't, there's no more elections, it'll come. And let me tell you, again, just check out the news for yourself. Greg Hunt, our health minister. Yeah, you remember when Scott Morrison said we're going to make the COVID vaccination as mandatory as possible? And then he backtracked very quickly and said, oh, no, we're not going to make it mandatory. And then Hunt came out and said, well, well, there are things that we can do. Well, guess what Hunt has just now come out and said? No jab, no pay. No jab, no work. No jab, no travel. No jab, no nothing. And eventually, as I've said before, they'll come and take your kids because you will be deemed a, uh, a health threat and they'll remove your kids from you. This is, in, this is designed to terrorise you into submission. And I'll say it again, this is government terrorism. Terrorism, by definition, is politically motivated violence. And in my opinion, every government in the country is complicit and the cowards who are just following suit and trying to fix it from within, give me a break. You're part of the problem. Hunt has said it. He did. Check the data. Check the news stories. Do your own research. You will be compelled to take a, a vaccine. You will be compelled to be locked down. Yeah. Folks, this is not good. This is the last shot. Either we win in Queensland or Australia goes south. And it's not because Tracy and I are particularly heroic. It's just we're the last ones. If we had another election, I wouldn't be so animated about this. But there is one. This is it. And I've got to tell you, Queensland better wake up because you're doing it for the whole country. And I'm about to talk to a bunch of permaculture uh, enthusiasts in my electorate. And I'm a big fan of that. Whole foods, um, healthy grown uh, foods which produce healthy food for people. And I've got a whole story about that which I'll explain to them. But you know what? It doesn't matter squat. 
If you can't move, if they're going to force an injection into you, it doesn't matter voting on whether you like permaculture or not. I do. I've got no problem with it. But that's not what's at stake here. What's at stake at this election is the freedom of Australia. Now, we're lucky. We are unique on the planet. We have a sea air gap that it's difficult to, to cross. We have resources. We can be utterly self-reliant like no other country on the planet. We can be self-reliant if we need to. The entire planet can go down and we'll survive. Not only that, we'll thrive. But not until we get politicians who are leading the, the federal government and the state governments in a way that the people want them to do. We've got to give the, the country... I Actually, you know what? I was wrong. I used to say give it back to the people. It's never been the people's country. It's always belonged to somebody else. Well, no, 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 no more. From now on, it's going to belong to the people. We are going to... And I wasn't going to make too big a deal of this because we wanted to get our work done first, but it's, it's getting ahead of steam. We need a constitutional convention. And we're going to go from scratch and we're going to acknowledge the fact that we have an unconstitutional constitution at the moment because it's been changed illegally. But we're going to have a constitutional convention. We're going to design a, con a, a constitution which will be a world first and power is genuinely in the hands of the people. And it'll be worked on an electorate by electorate basis. Yeah. That's what we need to save this country. Now we need wise, patient and educated heads to drive this process forward. That's the only way we can save the country and the only way we get the Constitutional Convention is if Tracy and I win in Queensland and we open the door for the rest of the country. Mm. Interesting. So all the radicals calling for a violent revolution, basically what you're saying is stand back and stand by, as Trump would say? No, don't even stand by, just relax. Because I can tell you this, for those who don't know, in fact, I'm probably the only politician who can run a, re a revolution, technically qualified to do so. But what you need for any revolt of any nature, whether it's physical or just emotional or, or most social media, is you need the support of the people. That's the centre of gravity. Without the sort of support of the people, I don't care how many guns you've got, you're going to lose. Mm. And here's the dumb part, what they don't get. If they tried something, they would give the trigger for the government to shut down the entire country and the half a dozen hotheads that ran around with guns would be locked up and never heard again. Mm. That's why we've got to do this in a political way. We've got to do this in a measured way that we bring the people with us because without the people, we are nothing. That's right. Well, if you're in Queensland, guys, I envy you because if I was there, I'd be there every day helping Tracy and Rick get those votes in those areas. If you're listening to these videos, and I know there's a lot of you because I see where the views come from, I see next week we're, we're on track to reach a million views in seven weeks. That's insane. That's, that's insane for a, a show that had no credibility, the arc from scratch. And if you're in Queensland, and I know there's thousands of you, tens of thousands, Get out there, honestly, get out there, drive down. I don't care what you have to do. You know, I drive that far for a holiday. I'm sure you can do it to save your country. Get down there and help get these areas across the line. You know, <laughs> Australia's relying on you. We really are. Oh, the calls we get, and I've got a, another apology for not replying to the countless emails and phone messages. I will get back to you. Yep. But the calls are just pouring in faster than you can imagine. Tons of support. Phone call from a, an individual the other day asking for my help to help them with their cause. And it was a good, solid cause. I said, of course I will, no problem. And she was very excited. And she said, well, uh, we've been running this group for, for about four months. And we have six or seven, no, seven or eight. And I thought seven or eight hundred you know, supporters. We have seven or eight hundred thousand supporters. Can we help you? <laughs> and I said to myself, ma'am, thank you very much. Yes. We have a little thing called an election coming up on the 31st, so if you can mobilise your six, seven, or 800,000 people to assist in any way they can. So understand this, we, we are getting a lot of support from a lot of good people, and it's just good, ordinary, decent folk. That's right. Who own the country. Yeah. And if they didn't, they will soon. Exactly. And the point I would emphasise is that everyone is, you know, these problems, they're not going to go away if you don't, do, if you don't resolve these issues. So <laughs> I hate saying get active. It's such a, um, you know, a throwaway line, but it really, it's what needs to happen. You need to get out there and hand out, you know, how to vote cards and ask. They're going to have to save their own there. country. They are. There's only so much a handful of people can do. If yeah. the people of Australia want their country back, yeah. get to Corumban, get to Nicklin and yeah. help. 
Exactly. I mean, Ricardo's not going to descend from the clouds and save your country like Jesus Christ no, on the Mount I'm, of Olives. I'm far from that man's standards, let me tell you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, Vic, And that goes for you guys in Victoria too. I see what you're, you've got council elections on. You keep asking, is A1 running? And I say, no, you're running. If you want, if you want assistance, here's your brand. Let, we'll interview you, we'll go through the process, and we'll go from there. But Ricardo, as I said, he's not going to descend from the clouds and save you, all right? A1's not going to save you. You have to do that yourself. A1 does what this book does. It empowers you to be a powerful individual, both for you, your family, and your country. And that's, that's the purpose of the book. Now, there are some people that have given all for this country, and they've got some devastating stories. Mm. What do you think our country thinks of <clears throat> these soldiers and what they've done? All right. Let me give you... I want to read this to you now, and... Bear with us, please, because uh, this will take a bit. But I, this is not uncommon. I get many, many messages from people. Uh, some are support and, and uh, donations and things like that. But every so often, and more, more often than I like, I get something like this. Now, I'm going to change the individual's name, but I'll leave the rest exactly as he wrote it. I want you to understand what's going on. When you think that you won't be stitched up by your government, that your government won't hang you out to dry... I want you to listen carefully and understand that the government is peopled with psychopaths who care nothing about you. So just listen to this. This is my life and you have my full support. My name is, let's call him Bill. I'm a soldier, former soldier of the 1st Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, 1RAR, and an East Timor veteran. 2000 and 2001 was a year that 1RAR conducted drug trials using mefloquine, and Tefenokwin. One RR was lined up on parade and our commanding officer, John Caligari, announced that 450 soldiers had been chosen from one RR to participate in a drug trial to push Tefenokwin, an anti-malarial drug that still today has not been approved by the Therapeutic Drugs Administration to be a first choice drug. He then proceeded to say that it was consensual but if we didn't sign the form, then we didn't deploy to Timor. Of course, we all signed. We trusted our CO, right? How wrong we were. It was not disclosed that the side effect of this drug or the fact that tefenoquin was not approved nor registered. We were preloaded and took the drug for seven months. The maximum you can take these drugs is only three months. Once deployed, effects started kicking in. I saw my mates have traumatic nightmares, and when they approached medical staff, they were threatened to keep taking the drugs or be charged with an offence and sent back to Darwin. This is from Timor. I myself started experiencing paranoia, nightmares, and becoming super aggressive, and started fighting with my own section. That's a, a group of uh, seven, eight, nine men to fighting section. Once home, things got real bad. I really started having bad anxiety attacks and I started convulsing in my sleep like epilepsy. My wife and I are now separated but still amicable. She will testify that in my sleep I would attempt to strangle and hit her and I would wake up in the morning with no recollection of any of these events, then fall into depression as I felt horrible that this was happening. We were not allowed to go on leave when we got home as there was further testing and drugs to take. I told the medical staff of my events at home and told, uh, was told this was normal as to the harsh conditions of operations and it was just my rapid eye movement sleep that was adjusting. I told my wife back then it had to be the drugs that were affecting me. I was part of the Lucky 100 Club, as they, it was called back then. We had to go back for further testing and then there was meant to be further follow-up medical checks that never happened. I kept quiet about my problem, problems, as I feared I would be kicked out of the army. Until recently, I have found out that a heap of other defence members and veterans are in the same boat, and worse, they are committing suicide at an alarming rate. I showed my now ex-wife all the information so she would begin to understand that I wasn't being an asshole for no reason. She burst out crying, and is angry about all this and it has brought great heartache to me and my family. We were robbed as we didn't have a choice. We just followed orders. For that I pay a huge price. No family, 
No Department of Veterans Affairs assistance, government or RSL support. Mental problems, sleep issues and anxiety and the list goes on. This is not some bullshit story. I'm still trying to function, but all I want is help and justice as to how this all came about. I want to see justice dealt with the banning of this drug so future soldiers and they get to stay with their loving families and they don't endure brain injuries. We need further proper medical tests and treatment to those who are poisoned. My biggest question to GlaxoSmithKline, that's the drug manufacturer, and their offshoot company 60 Degrees, if this drug is so safe, why weren't we followed up 6 or 12 months after our return from East Timor? Or even to this day. We gave all and sacrificed everything. Thank you. That's not uncommon. There's two points I want you to take away from this. One, the plight of the soldiers from East Timor. Um, I actually visited one former soldier in the uh, facility where he was being kept. I visited another three in a halfway house where they were being kept. This goes back a couple of years now. So this isn't a recent thing. And they have been utterly abandoned by the Defence Force, the Department of Veterans Affairs and the government. Now, if you don't think they deserve better, then, then you're not an Australian. These people have to be looked after. The truth has to come out. Morrison and those cowards in the headquarters of Australian Defence Force and the cowards at the Department of Veterans Affairs, and I know them personally. I know them personally. This is going to come out. So you've got a choice. You start taking action or I will. And I'll tell you, I'll be a whole lot less kind than everybody else is going to be. How dare you treat our soldiers like guinea pigs and then abandon them? For what? Another promotion, Angus? You enjoying the rank, are you, mate? Enjoy it while you've got it. Because you and Rick and all the others, you will pay. Morrison, you're for the high jump. This is serious. You've abandoned our soldiers. Second point. For the people out there that don't give, a, don't give a toss about the soldiers, you don't think the government's going to force a vaccine on you? Well, there's the proof. Not only will they force a vaccine on you, they will abandon you. They don't care. Once again, politics in Australia is about to change, and it's not because the Liberal, Labor, Greens, National cabal are doing it. We will do it. The people will do it. We're going to hold them to account. As I've said before, we're going to have to build a whole new jail. You know what? We won't build a jail. Let's throw, throw them all in with the general population. How does that sound? Scotty, if you're found guilty, you want to be in the general population of Pentridge? There you go. We'll open that back up. No problem. This is serious, folks. This is not a game. Yeah, it's, it's sad because, you know, when something happens to someone high profile, we give it attention. I mean, I love Jordan Peterson. And um, unfortunately, he went through problems with benzodiazepine, which I don't, I, I, I couldn't tell you what the hell that is, guys. I really couldn't. But because he went through some real trouble where he almost died, he got COVID-19 during, the, during um, fighting it, he ended up in rehab and, uh, for, for, for a very long time, for, for a few months. And he's only just returned this week to his home. Now, it's been good that it's happened overall because this has shone a light on this. But who the hell is this guy that's talking? This is a guy that's given his life for the country, his family for the country. And he was betrayed by not only his superiors, but even with veteran affairs. Why is it that it's a common thing around the world, especially in the United States, that veterans get discarded like this, and especially by veteran affairs? Is it because it's a publicly run uh, organization from, from the government or... I just don't get it. I don't understand. These people gave everything. <laughs> we'll investigate and we'll report back. Gee, that's the first time you've said, I don't know. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, Trump's doing a good job over there. He's done a phenomenal job with veteran affairs in revamping it and clearing that uh, hell hole out. We've got to do the same here. Last topic. And this is the only thing we were really touching on for the US this, this week, guys because it's massive. The Hunter Biden situation is hilarious. I mean, the guy was drunk. He gave his laptop into a mechanic for laptops to fix it. And 
this technician couldn't work out why he didn't return to get the laptop again. <laughs> I, this laptop has very incriminating stuff. Not only does it prove what's, what's happened with this arrangement with his father financially, but it also incriminates him for sexual, possible sexual abuse of his 14-year-old sister-in-law. 14-year-old. I mean, the QAnon people are freaking out right now. They're like, we, we tried to tell you. And Joe Biden didn't report this to the police. There's texts. Rudy Giuliani, the lawyer for Trump, showed this. There are texts between Joe Biden and his son, Hunter. Are you surprised, Ricardo, as, as much as I am? No. No, I'm not the least bit surprised. I'm just pleased it's finally coming out. Creepy Joe. They call him Sleepy Joe, but he's actually Creepy Joe. I don't know if you have... You have I wonder if the ABC, that, that publicly funded uh, arm of the Chinese Communist Party, have they done one Joe Biden story that tells the truth about Creepy Joe? Right. As, we, as we've found out. And once again, folks, just... Check your news services, and if they haven't mentioned this, turn it off. For God's sake, turn it off. Yeah. Find your own news. Yeah. Do your own research, because if you're watching the free-to-wear or the, or the, uh, the public-funded broadcasts in Oz, they're lying to you. Yeah. They are concealing from you. Yeah. Hunter Biden, that's Joe Biden's son, was off collecting corruption money, bribes. Yeah. And uh, Joe collected a 50% cut, basically, he used his coke-addled son, this is Joe Biden, he used his coke-addled son as the bagman for corrupt payments. And has the ABC covered this? SBS, Channel 10, 9, 7, anybody? Triple J? No? Really? I'm shocked. It's almost like they want to keep you stupid and uninformed. Well, folks, please, turn off the news. Do your own research. Yeah. You'll be shocked. You'll be utterly shocked. And when you're ready... Give us a call, sign up, and join us, because there's only one organisation in this country that's going to turn it around, that's us. Exactly. And by us, I mean the people. Exactly. So, I mean, follow that closely, guys. There's a debate happening um, today, the day after you watch this interview. This is dropping 7am on a Friday. At uh, 12 o'clock today, on, on the Friday, there's going to be a debate, the final debate, between Trump and Biden. And you can be damn well sure Trump is going to talk about this stuff to Joe Biden. And did you hear they're going to cut his mic? They're going to... Who's my Trumps? They have the ability to cut the mic now. <laughs> and they changed the, the topic, Ricardo. They agreed on this topic months ago. They were going to talk about uh, foreign policy. That's what this debate was meant to be. They haven't touched it yet in detail. And this was meant to be that debate. They changed it. I wonder why. Is it because three, over $3 million was given to Hunter Biden by the ex-wife of the mayor of Moscow? A very close friend of Vladimir Putin? Is that why? Or is, it, or is it the billions or the millions of dollars that China gave Hunter, whether it be boards or being flown there on, on Air Force Two? <laughs> it's right there, guys. It's, it's, it's literally right there. You don't have to go to the dark web. I've never had to go to the dark web in my life to find this info. Mm. It's right there. You know, people get annoyed about Trump saying, you know, grab her by the pussy or whatever. And you've got Joe Biden in the White House touching women in the wrong way. In fact, people don't know about this, Ricardo. There was one situation where the Secret Service guys, the Secret Service sort of team, they would have parties every year, Christmas parties, and they had to stop that because what would happen was Joe Biden would start sexually abusing women there, like physically touching them, the, 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 the girlfriends of the um, bodyguards. In fact, there was one year, and this document's been deleted, there's one year where he did it so badly that there was almost an altercation between Joe Biden, the vice president, and one of the, the bodyguards. It was that bad. The file has disappeared. <laughs> they're being played. The Australian people are being played. And when they wake up, they're going to be bloody angry. But folks, look, just to fin wrap up, Queensland election, this goes out on a Friday. It's 10 days away, nine days away. This is the most important nine days of Australia's life to date. Either we win on the 31st of October or we lose for a very, very long time. Mm. All right. If you're in Queensland, get out there. If you're not in Queensland, share the video with someone from Queensland. Absolutely. Share as much as you can. Exactly. If you don't know any Queenslanders, like I know one Queenslander, 
if you don't know any just share it on your wall someone will share it and that'll that'll that's how these videos have gone from zero to a million i told you guys we have a contract ricardo he brings the fire i bring the cameras and ask the questions <laughs> you your end of the bargain is sharing the videos that's it and if you're in queensland you get out and do the job that's the reality that's how we're going to change the country and keep educating yourself on this stuff but ricardo thank you for your time no oh, thank you joel and uh, thank you to all your supporters who have um, put their trust in you to bring them something that they're getting nowhere else you know an intelligent informed conversation so they can leave this 45 minutes or so better off than when they started so thank you mate you're doing a you're doing god's work my pleasure uh, thanks ricardo you, you have a good weekend uh, good luck this week thanks mate